Okay, perfect. So welcome everyone to First Wednesdays. Each First Wednesday call is uploaded publicly to Gretchen Heidel's uh, YouTube channel. Um, so it won't be edited. So if you don't want your image or voice on YouTube, uh, please keep your mic off in uh, or your mic muted and camera off. However, we would love for you to participate if you are able to. Um, first Wednesdays are for any coach who wants to build their coaching business. Uh, in today's call, we are going to be going over how to fill your pipeline for consistent client creation. So I'll go ahead and hand it over to Gretchen. Well, hi, everyone. It's really good to see all of you here tonight. And like Olivia said, we're going to talk about how do you fill your pipeline? You know, what do you need to do so that you have consistent clients? I know that this is a question that many coaches have and struggle with. And even if you've been at it for a while, getting a um, new idea on how to consistently get clients, I think is always helpful, even, even for me and I'm seasoned at it. So I would love it if you unmute when you feel like it and throw in your questions, you can put them in the chat as well, but we're going to do it workshop style like we always do. So feel like you can participate. I really do appreciate that. Now, what I'm wondering from all of you is what did you come here for tonight? What were you hoping to learn? So you can drop it in the chat or you can unmute and tell me, but I want to make sure that I touch on the different pieces that you're hoping to take away. Or did you just come because it's first Wednesdays and you wanted to see what I've got? Yeah. I'll, I'll come off mute for just a moment. For someone who um, feels that I'm, I've been at it a while. I'd love to have a creative idea, something I haven't thought of before that other people are doing right now, having access to, to find that client that um, they didn't know they had access to. So that's why I came today. Okay. Okay. I love that. And then Hugo, I see how to turn networking into connection calls without sounding salesy. Yeah. Nobody wants to sound salesy. Anyone else have something here that you want to make sure we cover? Okay. Well, jump in as you do and we will and we will, you know, talk about all these things. Now, what I can say is with both of these and I was just writing it down, wanting creative ways to find clients that you might not have thought were available to you and connecting with people without sounding or feeling salesy. How many of you have the same desire? You know, even if it wasn't you who posed it. Yeah. Yeah. And I know from a lot of you too, that the salesy part, it's like, I don't want to sound like I'm selling anything to anybody. And so it's really important that as we're thinking about this tonight, let's look at it from a lens of serving rather than selling and getting creative and curious with our client creation, because that's going to be the way that for this question that you posed, Edward, of how do I get creative about, about this? We need to get really curious about where are these people. So I'm going to go over some things. Then you guys can ask questions. Interject as you want to, and, and we'll get started. So here's something that I know for certain is that when we're doing anything, especially client creation, being consistent with it is key. And what do I mean by that? It's a lot like going to the gym and you do it for two weeks and you're doing really good and then you don't do it anymore. And then you wonder why you don't see any results because you have to keep going. And a lot of times we burn out because it gets hard, kind of like the gym. Your muscles are sore. You don't really feel like it that day. And so when we think of client creation as something that we do or don't do based on how we feel, we're already missing it. So as we're having this conversation tonight, I invite you to put on your most professional self. And what do I mean by that? That when we are thinking about client creation, if you come at it like it's a hobby and that it's all based on feeling, you will have a business that isn't really full. But if you come at it like I'm a professional and professional serve, and as a professional, I'm going to coach, it's not really a matter of do I feel like it? It's a matter of this is just what I do for my living and I want to do this. It will change the frame. So think of it like any other job. You know, I know that all of you have had other careers. Were there days that you went to work that you didn't feel like it? I know I had a lot of days I went to work and I didn't feel like it. I didn't care about it. I didn't feel like it. I was talking badly about it. I was talking badly about the people that I thought I should own the company, like the whole thing, right? Because that's just 
kind of person that I am. And so it didn't matter if I felt like it. I still went to my job because guess what? I wanted to get paid. And so it's the same thing here. If you would enjoy an income from coaching, you need to think of this as your job and going to work. But the best part about this is, is that the payment is in correlation with serving. So other jobs that I had, they had very little to do with serving. It was like, you just have to do this because this is what the company needs. And so you do it. But with this, we really can see the changes that a person makes in their life due to coaching. So it's something that for me, it feels really good to do it. I'm gratified every time I coach somebody. So on top of the income, there's the gratification that this person is moving along. And I love the empowerment of that. So as you're thinking about this with your consistency, I wonder right now, I'd love for you to reflect for a minute. And then a few people are going to share. What is your client creation process like now? Meaning how many days a week are you focusing on client creation? How many hours a day are you focusing on client creation? Do you have a client creation system? Do you have a way that you keep track of your clients? So just think of all of those things for a moment. And remember, there's no judgment here about what you are or aren't doing, but this is going to be a good jumping off point for the consistency. So who is willing to share? What do you do right now that is your client creation process? How do you go about it? Yeah, Hugo. Well, one, one thing that's been working for me right now and it helps with not doing so much networking, it's been Yelp. And uh, people have been uh, posting like services and then I respond to them and some people have been booking connection calls. But nice. the other thing, which is harder, is the t attending networking events. Mm -hmm. And so for you, you rely on networking events to build your clientele. That's what I'm doing that's new for myself. That's what's new for you. Okay, thank you. And how many hours a week are you spending on your client creation? Um, it varies, but like tomorrow I have a lot going on. I have like a BNI in the morning and I have an expo all day thing event. And then, um, yeah, that, that's the other thing's personal. So, okay. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else here? Can you share about what are you doing currently for your client creation? Edward. I am not creating a structure for client creation. I am finding opportunities of where I happen to be, you know? So instead of like going and networking or reaching out cold call or making direct LinkedIn messages, if I'm at a party, oh, who can I uh, get in touch with? If I'm at a networking event, who can I talk to? But it's like, wherever I am, I create an opportunity, but I'm not creating opportunities for me. I'm passively taking advantage of where I am instead of creating. And this is where my downfall is. I could create more of a pipeline. If you wanted to. You know, if you, Great, if you want you. To, it's available to you. Thank you for sharing that. Here's the thing with client creation that I want everyone to kind of take note of. There's a beginning, middle, and end. There's that very first meeting point, whether it's the networking event, wherever you are in your life, like Edward was saying, but that first, first entry point of meeting, okay? Then there's the invitation to a connection call. Then you have the connection call if the person has said yes. If the connection call goes well, then you have a coaching call. And if the coaching call goes well and they show interest, then hopefully you go to contract. But that's the way you want to be thinking about your client creation. Initial meeting, initial intro, whatever that would be. Connection call, if it goes well. Coaching call, great. If it goes well, hopefully contract. If not now, then later. But this is the seed planting that needs to be happening on a weekly basis in order for you to have a full practice. I don't know any other way to do it. I don't, you know, and I've been at it for a long time and I've been pretty good at it 
as far as I'm concerned, you know, that, that I have clients, I have a full practice. I've had a full practice for years and years. And, you know, I've done a lot out there in the world of how do you get clients and how do you get clients in a different way? I've never been able to get a client without a conversation. So when people talk about, oh, I just want to have a funnel and then they're going to automatically sign up and suddenly I'm coaching them. I have never once had that experience, not even one time. Now, maybe you have, and that's great. If it is, I really want to hear, and I'm not even being facetious. I really do want to hear like, what did you do? How did, how did that work for you? Because I am so curious, but with all of you that want to be successful coaches that end up being word of mouth, it's going to come from the connections, the connections that you make out there in the world, the connections that you make to people that you already know. So here's something, because a lot of us think, well, that's nice. How I don't know that many people or the people that I know don't need coaching or I'm not going to get referred, whatever that that narrative is that's happening. A practice that I was taught to do by a wealth coach about five years ago, and this is something that helped me, was to just let it drop in in the morning. Who can I serve? Who can I serve? And you will be so surprised about who shows up for you? You will get names. You're like, oh, really? This guy from high school that I haven't been in high school in 30 years. That's weird. Whatever it is. But who can I serve? And see who comes through and just write their names down. And that's the people that you can reach out to. You know, so who can I serve and how can I serve? Both questions, because sometimes it's in the how can I serve? This is where it's like, well, I could get involved in a networking group. I could volunteer for the ICF. I could do a workshop, but that's another place for connection. So whenever we're doing any of this, inviting in and really going deep of like, who might it be? What could I do? You will get an intuitive thought. I know it's a little bit woo woo, but we're coaches. So why not? But that is something that is something that can work. So there's that. The other thing that I want you to be thinking about is, do you have a process? I just laid out my process of, you know, Initial, initial contact, connect, coach, contract. And if you don't have a process, that's going to slow you down for client creation because you might have someone that you meet, Hugo's going to a networking event. He might have someone that he meets, but if he doesn't do the invite for the connection call, and then he doesn't have a system for the connection call and what actually gets covered in the connection call, then he might not ever get to the invitation for coaching. And if you don't get to the invitation for coaching, it's really hard to bridge the gap to get to contract. And so most of the time, what happens is coaches are eager, we're pretty friendly, and we're introverted. It's like a weird dichotomy that we have, like, I'm willing to talk to you, but only sometimes. And so me too. We want to go from invitation to contract, but we can't skip the middle pieces. So I'd love to hear from some of you, where are you at with your own process, your own system in what you do once you meet somebody? Who has something here? Yeah, I'll go. Okay, go. So uh, for me, I usually meet the person and so far I've just been like getting cards and I'm so busy that I haven't been following up with people mm -hmm. um but that's as far as I've gotten it's just getting through that anxiety of meeting new people because that's already stepping out of my shell right now yeah and that's enough right now um so that's as far as I'm getting to right now. The tomorrow event, that's going to be nice because we're going to have all like scanners and we're going to have our apps on our phone and we're going to be able to put like cold, medium or hot lead and then um, see where that goes after that. Okay. Okay. So thank you for sharing that. And something that I heard you say is that you've been too busy to follow up. So is it that you've been too busy to follow up or is it the anxiety that's standing in the way of following up? The anxiety. Yeah. And so it's important for us to call it as it is. So thank you for sharing that. Sometimes people make a lot of contacts, but they don't follow up because they don't know what to say, or they're worried that the person doesn't really want to hear from them. They're anxious. They're whatever it is, but they say something like, I'm too busy. I'm too this. I'm too that. We need to really look at what is the true block. 
So anxious and anxiety almost always can be combated by knowing what to do and having a system. For most things, if you have a system and you know what to do, you can overcome the next step. So Hugo, my recommendation to you would be to then after you've gone to these, you have those business cards or, or however they've given it to you on dot or whatever it might be that you follow up and you say, hey, it was great meeting you at blah, blah. And it was, I like talking to you about whatever it was and invite them to a conversation. Just invite them and take them the next step. And let's see what starts happening for you with that next step. But for all of you, I want you to remember invitation, connection, coach, contract. That's the steps. That's what we do. All right. Now, as we go through this, why don't we do, why don't we do a big brainstorm? Because um, I know that Edward is not the only one here that would like a new and creative way to get in front of clients. No idea is a bad idea, but let's hear some of the different things that all of you have done and, and really see, is there something that we can add here? So I'll go. One of my coaching clients, one of the things that they did, they put pop-up coaching in front of Starbucks and they would just sit there with a little tent card that said pop-up coaching with their Starbucks, drinking their Starbucks and people going into Starbucks are friendly enough. And most of them would say, well, what's pop-up coaching? What does it mean? And it was great conversation starters. Now, did they really coach anyone right there? No, of course not. That's not happening. But was it was enough of a connection and it was with a clipboard where they actually had times if you wanted a further call. So she did this for three weeks in a row. She got 20 calls, 20 connection calls. And she's very gregarious. So it worked for her. Now, may or may not work for your personality. But what I'm saying is if we're really getting creative, what what could you do? What have you already done? Throw some things out there. Nick, what about you? Talk about Lunch Club. That uh, I'm still laughing at that Starbucks idea. You could do uh, the Starbucks idea. L Lunch Club is, is great. It's, it's a free service um, online, lunchclub.com com or org i always forget uh but you just get mashed up with the semi-random people after you make a profile and you talk and there is no expectation about business networking or anything it is it always starts personally and socially and uh it's random but you get to meet very interesting people from all over the country and sometimes out of the country and um it's good practice i found I know, actually, I have taken many people to, you know, from there to connection calls, to coaching calls, uh, to proposals. It's a bit slower on that part so far, but getting there. And it uh, people are very receptive. And it, it, like I was starting to say before, it's, there's a lot of practice in just how do you work with different people? How do you interact with them? How do you focus on what they need and how you may be able to help them? How do you approach it? without uh, without being sleazy, you know, without being inappropriate. And uh, I found it very useful for that. Yeah. Okay. So we've got Lunch Club. It's a little bit like networking. So, and there, what he's saying though, is he had a process after, and there were certain things that he's listening for as well. And Nick, can you share a little bit about, could you use some help with that? Yes. And that was, that was a breakthrough idea that... My biggest concern, and I, this is shared by, I think, a lot of people who start up coaching was, okay, how do I transition or offer my help without coming across as sleazy or needy or desperate or uh, pushy? And I think there's two parts to that. You know, half of that was my own work and, okay, what were my hangups with offering that? What was I expecting? And I was expecting too much and, and taking on too much responsibility for the client. But then I realized with that magic phrase of, could you use help with that? Instead of like, hey, what can I do for you? It really puts people at ease when you ask them, hey, would it be helpful to you? Could you use help with this problem? You know, we just spent, you know, 30 minutes chatting, getting to know each other. And I remember, you know, you said X, Y, and Z, you know, I'm pretty familiar with that area or I've helped other clients like that. Would it be helpful to you to spend an hour focused on that? And a shocking number of people don't just accept. They're very grateful for it. That really surprised me. 
So even some of the key phrases are things that you can do for client creation. Could you use some help with that? It's very disarming. And the other part is too, when you've spent 30 minutes with someone getting to know them, you will hear something. You really will. You're, you, you will hear something. Okay. What are some other things that you have tried or would like to try that are creative, curious, clever ideas? I, I haven't tried this myself yet, but I have a friend who, who has done this and I love the idea. He's joined Meetup. I mean, well, Meetup has a gazillion different opportunities, but I'm in Colorado and so is he. And he will go on business networking hikes. So unlike, you know, just going to some, you know, hotel lobby or whatever, you know, and, and doing business networking, you're doing some activity over time. You get to have multiple conversations and, and some time to meet people. And he's made several contacts that way. And, and I, I think it's a really, you know, lovely idea. Yeah. And that's something outside the box for sure. And people who go to that must be people who like the outdoors. So you already know something about, about them, you know, like they like the outdoors, they like nature, they like to move their body. So maybe something with health is what they would be interested in, or is this the way that they relieve stress? Are they looking for connection because they came with the group? So there's things that you can do. I have one coach. She is an avid mountain biking, mountain bike rider. And she actually created a mountain biking, a mountain biking program for her clients. She does like these VIP experiences and she takes them out and she takes them to their limit. And what she does is she says it's going to be a challenging day. And she listens for all of their limiting beliefs as she's like kicking their butts on the trail of like why they can't do it and how they're afraid. And she's like, how else does this apply in your life? Where else can't you do it? Where else are you afraid? What do you say to yourself? She already knows their big goals in life and she takes them through and she marries a physical challenge with a mental challenge. So she really has created something so cool. And it came from her riding her own bike and having a day where she felt like she couldn't do it. So you never know how or where you might meet people. So what's another idea that comes to mind? Maybe you haven't done it, but it could be interesting. I have a friend who is a soccer mom and soccer moms spend a lot of time on the road, you know, sitting in the bleachers, doing nothing and striking up conversations. Um, and so um, this soccer mom took advantage of being curious about, about instead of like, what do you do, you know, as people always say, you know, start conversations about, they ask, you know, what is the most exciting thing that you've done recently? Or how do you have fun? And then people are often saying, you know what, I haven't had fun in a while. And it's, it's a great opportunity for, uh, for them to say, well, would you like to have more fun, you know? What's stopping you from having more fun? And so just having a strategic question in a place that you already are. And if you're a soccer mom, you're meeting lots of people. So there you go. There you go. Fun. Yeah. And then tomorrow, do you mind sharing a little bit about some of the things that you've done? I know that you've had some different successes along the way recently with your client creation. Well, I've been working more with your with your system. Um, and I was very hesitant to, to reach out with, you know, the fear and the, um, sense of ickiness around not wanting to be salesy. And so, um, I have been reaching out to people in my LinkedIn network for, with a focus of doing informational meetings. So really doing strategic research, essentially, about the types of clients that I work with, who tend to be lawyers and other professionals. Um, and I, Gretchen and I came up with this together, but it's a way for me to reach out with a, with a question that somebody can say yes to with a pretty low bar. And I'm always amazed at how many people there, I mean, you know, for 30 messages I send out, I get, you know, I don't know, somewhere between five and 10 people who respond in some way. And I'm always blown away by how many people do respond and that they are willing to get on the phone and just 
share their insights and their experience. So that's been super interesting in, in recent weeks. Yeah. And it opens the door to conversations that maybe you wouldn't have been having. And so that's really what we're looking for is like, how can we have a conversation? When I first started, what first the first thing I did was I emailed all of my old clients or old colleagues that I had worked with and told them all that I had added coaching to my list of services. I was a publicist at a time at the time, and I gifted sessions to the different execs at their companies that I was already working with. So it was a good way to expand and to let people experience coaching. You can do a lot of free like lunch and learns. Bigger companies, they're always looking for professional development for their people, and it gets you in front of a larger group. So that's something else that you can do. You can contact a company that either you already know, a company you volunteer for, a company that you're interested in, and just say, hey, you know, what's going on with your professional development right now? I have a workshop. It's 55 minutes. And I love bringing this into corporations so that they can experience whatever the thing is that you want them to experience. It's a really good way to get in front of the corporation because a lot of times people need to have experienced you or had an experience with you before they're willing to invest in themselves and with you. So even for me, any kind of program that I do, I always do a very low fee or free workshop prior to the larger sale, larger program. So for Stairway to Six for coaches, there's always either a mini series or a workshop that you're all invited to first so that you can experience me, the way that I teach, the way that I facilitate, or a piece of the program in real time. It makes it then when people have inquiries about how we can work together easier because they already they already have done something or been a part of something that I have led. And so it's the same thing when you can get in front of corporations or do a workshop, people have already had an experience with you and their trust level is higher. So with that, does that spark anything for you of something that you could do? Edward, I see you nodding. What does it spark for you? Well, I have been considering doing an asynchronous um, workshop, you know, and I'm thinking as I develop this, why not offer a live workshop that I can offer monthly, you know, and just like people invite, invite people in if they want to experience me, they get to see what I offer and how I can connect with them. So having a, a free monthly workshop, a virtual workshop that doesn't have to be long, 40 yeah. minutes, yeah. you know. And, and that's a great way monthly. It builds community kind of like I do with this group. It builds community. I would hope that if any of you were ever going to get a coach that you'd think of working with me, you know, I really like to pour into the community. And even if we didn't ever work together, this is really something that I enjoy. So that's the other piece is, th is thinking about what do you enjoy? What's important to you? And one of the things with coaches specifically that was important to me is that they learned how to make an income. You know, and so it's easy for me to do this once a month. It's something that I enjoy. I look forward to seeing all of you. So if you think of it like that, too, for the gal who sits in front of the Starbucks, she loves Starbucks and she loves chatting people up. So it's really easy for her. For me, I don't want to do that. That I'm not doing that. That feels like I'm going to sell some Girl Scout cookies or I don't know. I don't want to do it. Could I do it? Probably. And I probably would be OK at it, but I don't. That's not the way I'm going to do it. So these are the things though. It's like, what's creative? What is something that might be outside of the box? And then what's the next step that you have to take? So always remember that once you have done the creative thing, had the conversation, made the invitation, you have to do the follow-up piece or else it's dead in the water. All right, let me pause there. Questions, comments from anybody? Hi, Jill. I was just going to call on you and say, you're quiet tonight. Well, I went through a major move and it's taken everything out of me. So I'm just kind of exhausted. But um, what I want to ask you is the last couple of weeks, I've had two different client and ex-client uh, say that they referred people to me. And um, I haven't heard from them. Mm. And I always wonder, I always feel like, I want them to be proactive. So they're coming to me and they're motivated, but 
is there some, um, you know, is it okay to pursue a client like that? Because they didn't give me the name. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't really know what to do with it if I should just be sitting back and waiting. So this is this is such a great question. And I'm so glad people are referring you. It's funny though, right? Because sometimes people say, oh, I referred you and it's exactly what you said. Well, nobody reached out. So what does it matter? Here's what I tell people to do when they say, can I refer you? Oh, or I referred you. I say, oh, you know what? Let's take it a step further. Can you put me on a bridge email with the person and let them know that you have gifted them a session with me and tell them why you've gifted them a session with me. So it sounds like, um, Gretchen, meet Jill. Jill has been my friend for this many years. She's just gone through a move. She is uh, launching her coaching business. Jill, I'm gifting you 60 minutes with Gretchen. She's going to reach out to you. I thought the two of you should talk because Gretchen is a specialist in helping coaches launch, whatever it might be. But if if they can do that piece, then the other person's like, you got me a session. And sometimes they're happy about it and sometimes they're not. But either way, they feel like they're going to respond to you. So that's what I ask people to do when they're going to refer me. I also go a step further with that as well. Anyone who's going to refer me, I want to coach them first. Just one session. I want them to experience coaching with me so that when they refer me, they really know what they're talking about as a reference point. Now, does it happen like that every time? Of course not. People refer me and I've never coached them and it's fine, but I prefer it if I if I either had them in a group or we've had a one-on-one -on -one because then they know something about me. They know what it was like to be coached by me. Does that make sense, Jill? Yeah, I mean, these both have been clients, so they already know, right? They yeah, but I appreciate what you just said. Um, and you never know what you get from that either. If you yeah. yeah, and I really like the gifted session tool. One of the things that you may all want to think about for your own client creation is who are the different people that you hire for services? So I have a CPA, I have an accountant. That's not, I was going to say I have a financial planner. It sounds like I have a lot of money. That's not really necessarily what I'm trying to say. I just have all these financial people because math isn't my best friend. Um, but like I pay them. They all know that I coach. I've coached every single one of them once so that when they refer me, they know what they're referring. The financial planner can't refer. He's not allowed to, you know, and that's fine. But the lawyer uh, that I know, the estate planner that I know, I have coached them and they have referred me. But anyone that you are going to invest in, you might want to think about telling them what you do and really letting them know like who it is that you coach. CPAs know everybody. They, they, and they know who has income because they're CPAs. So people who have CPAs typically can afford coaching. And if you tell them like, hey, gift this, you know, think of your top five clients and give them a session with me, make it from you, but it's on me. I, I won't charge you for it. It's a really good way. They look good and you look good. How do you propose that to one of these people? How so like, like, hey, so-and-so. You know, we've worked together for this many years. I'm I'm pretty friendly with all of the people that I work with. So they know what I do. And I'll say like, hey, you know, um, I was thinking about you and I was thinking about your business. And I wonder who are your top five clients? And they'll say so, so, and so, whoever they might be, what are they up to in the world? And I have them tell me a little bit about them. And I'll say, you know, do you think that them having a coaching session with me would be helpful? They almost always say yes. I have had someone say no, but they almost always say yes. And then I'll say, you know, why don't you gift them? Gift it to them from you, but it's on me. And do an intro and let them know that you gifted it. And when the holidays are coming up, it's a very good time to reach out to people and say, hey, instead of buying them, you know, a wreath, a box of chocolate or whatever, why don't you gift them a coaching session with me? Especially when they're business people. Because business people have a lot that they are dealing with, not that non-business people don't, but when it's a CPA and they're dealing with business people, it's like, who do you know? Because they know everybody's stories too. Who's really stressed out right now that could use a coaching session? So that's typically how I propose it. Great. Thank you. Yeah.
Okay. Who else? Thanks, Hugo. Anyone have any questions? Um, I can try something. Um, so I love um quiz. I love to learn, and I'm a bit curious, but oh, I I also love to be surprised. So um, my coaching focus is on loneliness. I'm trying to develop this um uh, this um uh, this focus, and so the question I have asked around me, uh to friends uh, to test this idea is by questioning and uh, giving them two, two quiz questions. And the first one was, who was the happiest during the pandemic? Oh, nice. Yeah. And people are, uh, and I was saying the loneliest people because they felt that the world was lonely and they were no longer lonely anymore. So they were super happy. And that creates a super connection to storytell and relate to experiences and we share and we build up something. So yeah. that's, um, I love to quiz and in a way um, surprise people just to learn more about them too. I like that. And then have you taken it a step further from there to have, <laughs> no? What do you think your so, next step would be? Okay, so I need to build up my process. I need to do so many things. I have many, many ideas myself, but I really need to put them on the table and build something. Even if I if even if I have avenues to get started and I have many many ways I can see that, but I don't know yet which direction to take. Okay. So the first direction would be just a connection call. Just taking it a step further that if if they're telling you, you know, who is the happiest people and you're starting a conversation there. Just say, you know, it's really interesting. I'm hearing from you that, and do the reflective listening. Mm -hmm. I wonder, how would a call with me be helpful to you with and fill in the blank? But it's always that next part of the invitation of the connection that's going to be your next step. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, nice. Anyone else have a question or a comment? Hugo. So there's actually an opportunity for me to host something at my church. And I know right. they want to form something for veterans because there's not many services, especially for Catholic veterans. And um, I was recently a part of a study, which was like a group study. And I, I have experience facilitating groups. So I offered that to somebody who was going to like put something together, but he hasn't really put anything together. So I was thinking about reaching to the pastor and seeing if um, I can do something with him directly. I just don't know if I should do it weekly or monthly. Hmm. I don't know what I want to commit myself to. Well, I bet your pastor will have some ideas. Hmm about what the church needs, what the community needs and that sort of thing. And maybe even if it were something that's every other week or monthly, you guys could figure out a format that really serves the people. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Yeah. All right, let's do one more exercise. Everyone have a piece of paper or something to write on? Okay. Write down your three favorite clients? Who were your three or are your three favorite clients? Just look up at me when you have them so I can give you the next prompt. Okay, ready? We're going to go on. What made them your favorite? Write that down.
And the next thing is, where did they find you or where did you find them? You guys got it? Anybody need more time? Okay, what are you seeing in this for your client creation? Who are your clients? Because you want it to be the kind that are your favorite. And where did they find them or how did you find them? Who can share? I like people who are, you know, they're fun, they're talkative, but they're also willing to look inward and and really get curious about that. Uh, so people who are already a bit are a bit accustomed to looking inward, as opposed to someone who has never been re self reflective in their life. Yeah, and with your last three clients, where did you find them? Um, it was. B and I networking and lunch club. Yeah, good, good. So, what does that tell you as far as where your clients might be? Well, do do more, do more yeah. of the same. Yeah, and especially because you know which ones you liked, right? That you found your favorite clients, and here they were, and they were in these two places. Who else? Who else can share? Where did you find your last three clients, and what made them your favorite? or even your last favorite client if three feels like too many. I'm just looking for you to see the patterns here because what happens is we often think I should be, I should be networking. I should be doing social media. I should be on a board. I should do a workshop. I should do a lunch and learn. I should reach out to 10 people a day. I should stand on my head. I should eat pizza every day for lunch at the same time at the pizza place and see if I meet people that way. I should, I should, I should. But we're not doing any of the things that we think we should because we don't like most of them. But the way you met your three favorite clients is probably the best way to meet your future three favorite clients. So that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to help you uncover. So with me saying it like that, how do you want to find your clients? What makes sense for you and who you are? Jill. Um, I hear what you're saying, and, and it has usually been through people, through situations within my world, world. but truthfully, I want to kind of get out of that a little bit more. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, I was in business for years, and I'm not now, so I don't have that network anymore, but I... Um, I find myself resistant to probably doing what I need to do to get to those women, mm -hmm. the business women. What part feels, what, where's the resistance for you? What's the story? Um, not really sure how to, um, to present myself in that way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I did one workshop, not a workshop, but a presentation to a, financial management group and um a couple of things came out of it but not what I had hoped for you know so I just I don't I'm not really sure how to to get those women truth hmm. and when you think about who those women are and you're in your most creative self how do you think you could get in front of those women or connect with them well you said I, I, I guess I'm a little resistant to doing what you said, but I, I think it's probably valid, which is to um, to talk about professional development in organizations. Um, yeah, I have to push myself to do that. It's it's completely 
you know, I, I'm really resistant and I can do it. It's not like I can't, I'm just what, resistant. What's something that would have less resistance? Well, if I'm meeting people in a natural situation, that's a business person, that that's, that's my, you know, that's my go-to, right? Um, but I find that I don't enjoy these networking things at all. And I used to do them all the time, all the time in my career. And I really don't like them. So, it's so like, who do you already know that you could reach out to and say, hey, I'd love to bring a talk to your company about X, Y, and Z, but you just reach out to these people that you already know who are that in the professionalism category instead of re-networking. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused on how, what they really need as if I was going to bring a, a, a workshop or something like that to them. So you know? this is where Tamara's idea earlier about you reach out and you say, hey, I'm doing some research on professionalism, whatever it might be, whatever the topic is. And I'm wondering if I could have 15 minutes of your time. I'd love to hear what trends you're seeing and what the biggest challenges are. It's a really good way to start a conversation. Okay. okay. Thanks, Jill. Who else? What were you seeing here with your clients in ways that would be fun and maybe even easy for you to build more clients? Um, all of my favorite clients came through in one way or another people that I know. Mm -hmm. So there you go. What does it tell you? Um, that I don't have to do the networking that I, with strangers that I dread. <laughs> I just have to reconnect as I am doing, continue reconnecting with people that I, at some point have had a connection with or a relationship with, and really try to continue to work with, within that scope. There you go. How many of you love networking with people that you don't know? Does anybody? Yeah. I I do not love it. And by the show of this room, most people, it's not their favorite thing. So really, it's reaching out to the people that you already know and getting in there and getting really interested, getting really, really interested. So I hope that tonight has been helpful. So when you're thinking of your client creation and your pipeline, remember, first thing is be a professional. Think of who you can serve. Do that meditation for a moment and just see who drops into your mind that you might want to reach out to. Get really creative with it of just like, who should I contact today? Who should I serve? And don't block anybody's name that comes to your mind. It's like, huh, really? Okay, Benjamin, I'll reach out to that person. You know, but really think about it. Have your process. If you met someone who might be a possibility for coaching, do you know how to invite them? And if not, start there. Really get good at the invite. From the invite, what do you do? Oh yeah, connection call. From connection call, if it goes in the way that is good and they're asking questions, coaching call. From coaching call, if it moves forward, contract or it's seed planting. But know what you would send at each step of the way. Know what you would do each step of the way because that's going to help you at all of these stuck points. Figure out your equivalence to Starbucks. What is it for you that is your equivalent? You know, doesn't have to be that, but what's your equivalent that it you you could you could do something like that. And I truly believe that what you track, you pay attention to. I don't know how many of you have ever tried to lose weight or have done anything with a food calculator. It like becomes an obsession. At least the few times that I was I had to track it for different things. Oh my gosh, so obsessed. I'm like looking at that thing. Oh, I ate a hard boiled egg. Well, how big was the egg? I mean, it's crazy. All these choices that you have of what you need to write down. 
be that crazy with your client creation and your client tracking because you will notice it. You will be paying attention to it. It'll cause a bit of an obsession, which is a good thing when we're thinking of our pipeline. And I don't mean crazy obsession. I mean like, oh, who's my next one? Who am I reaching out to now? Okay, I invited this person. Oh, here's what comes next over here. Know where you're at in your process with each person. And your goal is to be having connection calls each week. If you do not have connection calls each week, you will not be able to build your pipeline. You need to be talking with people from the connection call. You'll know if you're inviting them for, to a coaching call from the coaching call. You'll know if this is going to go to contract and proposal or not, but it has to have that connection call. So that's really the goal. Give yourself a goal of how many people do you want to be connecting to each week? You know, what is it for you? Because you'll have to do another number of invites to get to that. Even when you invite 10 people, 10 people don't always say yes to the, to the connection call, maybe three, maybe five, whatever it is for you. So you'll have to invite more in order to get that number and not everyone books on the same week. So this is the process. You're doing it every week, but try to make it fun. Try to really make it fun and life-giving for you. And that's where it's like, look at your, I, I encourage all of you to look at your clients that you've booked in 2024 Write down next to each one, where did you find them? Where did you find them? How did they find you? What did you like about them? And go from there, because that's going to be the part that helps you to continue creating that. Okay, everyone. So I would love to hear from you what your takeaway is and what you are going to do as a next step. Mark. Hey, Mark. I haven't said anything yet. I'm so I'm going to go back... I'm going to go back to the beginning when you talked about going to the gym and being consistent, even though it isn't necessarily pleasant or helpful or you get sore. So the two things that I found out, I do, I have someone that helps me with social media posting and to be consistent on that. I've started to do little blogs now. And when I talk to people who I haven't talked with in a while, sure enough, oh, how's your business going? I saw your post and blah, 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 blah. And it's important also that I'm highly rated on, uh, you know, if somebody does a Google search, mm -hmm. I get one or two calls each month. And where did they find me? They did Life Coach in San Jose. There and I'm go. now be also becoming a big fan of BNI because it's not a cold call or a, you know, you just show up and do it. You get to know these people over months and months and months and months. And that's where I get a lot of referrals as well. Okay. So I love the commitment. Thank you so much. Who else? What are you committing to? What did you learn? I really like the line you said about after connecting, you have to do the follow-up or it's dead in the water. That's yeah. my learning edge right now. And so my commitment is to just, hey, I need to put in the work there. I need to pay more attention to that end. Most importantly, I think I need to be more creative about that to really see, okay, how can I still serve this person and then, uh, you know, take it from there. Fantastic. Thank you. Who else? What did you learn? What are you committing to? I'm, I love um, the fact Make it easy for you by capitalizing on something you you already love doing, something that you're really already good at, you know. And uh, what I'm committing to as a result is one thing I really enjoy is creating mission statements with my clients. So um, if I can create a free coaching workshop on helping people create their, their mission statement, it's just a natural thing that says, okay, you know your mission statement, let's you can, I can help you with that, you know, um, through coaching. So it's the feeder. That's right. Good. Anyone else want to share before we close up? Okay, everyone. It was so nice to be with all of you tonight. I would love to encourage you to send me an email or to put it in the Coaching for Coaches group of how it's going with your tracking, what we track, we pay attention to. How's it going with your 
client creation process? Where are you stuck? Where do you already know? It's like, well, Gretchen, even if I have a conversation, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do next. And let's keep talking about it. And then when I see you all in October, we can go deeper on this if it feels helpful to you. Okay, everyone, happy September. Nice to see all of you. Take good care. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.